Hey, what's up, guys? Arab here, and welcome back to the Pit Lane Podcast, episode 128 today, to discuss the 2021 rules and a lot, of, a lot of stuff to do with 2021, and then also look ahead to the Mexican Grand Prix. It's been a long while since all three of us actually done one of these sort of before race week in po- podcasts. We've been doing a lot of kind of post ones and kind of rounding up lots of Grand Prix in one go. But uh, yeah, finally here, back with some consistency, myself, Callum, and Tom. Um, so last week there was a meeting about the 2021 rules. It all seems quite hush hush there's not a lot of articles going on about it about what's come out of it essentially apart from really that the uh, veto power that ferrari holds which is at the moment as it stands basically ferrari can just say i don't like that basically to anything and they can veto stuff that is now changing as we go on forth into 2021 that will no longer be as powerful they can veto things but they have to go about it in a very formal big high fast kind of legal action kind of way if they feel like it's attacking the dna of formula one i think was the words uh, put out there um what do we make of that guys and uh, i don't know what do you make of the fact we haven't really heard much is that a good thing or bad thing for the 2021 rules or whatnot <laughs> I mean, I think in general, like, they have been very hush hush. I mean, Ross Braun, Braun and his team have been very to the side, on their own, just kind of doing their own thing and hopefully coming up with a set of rules that will improve the racing. And I think also with us making our step forwards where Ferrari are losing, they, have, they are starting to lose their power in the sport, as people might have a range of opinions on that. But I think in general, that is quite a good thing. Because this veto power, it, it it did have a lot of power. It still does. Um, but the fact that it's getting less and less is encouraging. It means that the the FIA have more control over the sport that you know their own sport, which is quite nice. And it gets rid of this Ferrari. I don't want to say preference, but this Ferrari niceness to be like, oh yeah, here's an extra <laughs> yeah. bit of money. Here's an extra bit of power just because you've been in the sport quite a long time, which. I mean, they've had all this power over the sport for quite a long time and it's not been the best in recent years. Royalties, if you will. Yeah, yeah right. royalties. <laughs> royalties yeah. But, um, yeah, it's a good thing, of course. It, it will help pushing things forward. Although, having said that, it seems like they're having a bit of a difficulty with the other teams anyway to push things at the minute. So, uh, we'll see how that progresses when it comes to the rules. Hopefully, we'll hear something soon. Um, yeah, overall, the, the the removal of the veto, or not the, I say removal in brackets is a good thing. So, um, yeah, hopefully moving forward, that means more openness with the regulations, and hopefully the FIA can kind of push their ideas across a little bit more. But unfortunately, there's 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 nine other teams, and uh, a lot of them still seem to be opposing certain things going forward. So. I yeah. guess we'll see how that one progresses, to be honest. Yeah, well, we'll probably find out we'll probably this this race weekend at Mexico and then also afterwards towards the end of October is when the, the FI, I think, have to start pushing forward stuff, basically, to, like, the most World Council and try and, you know, basically formally do all the kind of agreements and set out the regulations and at some point just publish the new regulations then for the teams to know um, and I think there's been some debate about when that's going to happen essentially but hopefully there'll be more info on that in the next week I, we, I, I kind of I think all three of us thought there'd be a lot more info about that this week but it's all been rather kind of behind closed doors and not too much shouting about which I think is kind of maybe a good thing because I was kind of worried that maybe there's going to be a massive thing of like oh teams are kicking up with fast and we haven't made progress so it sounds like they're just quietly doing some things and we'll find out kind of more concrete details later on. But on the topic of 2021, something that was kind of shouted about a little bit more was the uh, agreed in principle, uh, which still means it's a long way off, but agreed in principle is the Miami Grand Prix for 2021, which will be using like the stadium that's there in Miami as part of the kind of, not not track, but part of the kind of landscape of the track, if you will. The, I, I think the main straight's going to be planned to go uh, uh, outright outside the stadium, and that will be used as a big facility, basically. And obviously, it's already a massive place for sponsors to be and a lot of you know, business to, to, to run. So I guess it makes financial sense more to do something like that compared to the Miami one we had previously, which was kind of, what was it? It was like overarching some, into kind some of crap street circuit yeah some weird street circuit that yeah. kind of overarched the bridge and kind of went kind of towards yeah. the kind of sea the edge of the harbor area and just kind of you know it didn't look as nice as the plan the, the pros art concepts of this one looks obviously it's a long way off but what do you make of the miami thing being back on guys i, I don't know I can't, I can't remember if we felt amazing about it before or not no I <laughs> but i think the problem is is like i think it's getting track. to the point now we've been long we've been around long enough to know we can look at, at the yeah. shape of a track and go it's a bit crap yeah. <laughs> or it's quite good and this one looks better 
I hope it's not as flat as what it looks to be yeah, very recent flat. tracks are, which like you look at a recent track that's coming to the calendar, I think Kota, one of the best circuits on the calendar because of undulation. So I, I'm unsure about, you know, the undulation of it. And it's very yeah. interesting you say that, Arav, about the stadium because when they did boast about the stadium, I was like, well, are they going to get it implemented in the track? That would be yeah, quite no. cool. I think the concept that, like, um, alongside it. <laughs> yeah, like in comparison, for example, to Mexico where we're going yeah, no, um, yeah. <laughs> in, like uh, at yeah, the weekend. No. Uh, but, you know, I mean... Yeah, with 22 races, I'm unsure of, like, obviously there's been a lot of commotion about how stacked the calendar, stacked is, the calendar <laughs> is and the, the, the pressure on teams. And are we going to be putting on, are we going to be stretching the uh, teams to go to a track that's not even going to give us good racing in the first place? I yeah. think that's that's the thing now. I think we, we, we need to be quite strict with the tracks that we allow on the calendar. I mean, with Zandvoort, very very narrow circuit we're unsure what the ration is going to be like there for next year but you know we are well, next getting year to looks so... points of ridiculousness <laughs> next year looks already so packed with the the, the race we've got confirmed like i did a tweet when they confirmed the calendar back then it got a lot of traction in terms of like it just looks like too much like that's surely the limit and then i was gonna say you've got this news about miami added on wouldn't that be the 23rd race yeah it might be actually because we've got Zanvor, oh, we've got I... Vietnam next no, year. No, but, oh yeah. Vietnam and we've well. got Miami now in 2021. Shit. Is it, so I think yeah, it's, it's 20, wait, is it 22 next year, isn't it? <coughs> it's 22 next year with Oh uh, my Vietnam. lord. Is Vietnam so, on the calendar next year? Yeah. Yeah, it's next year. It's next right, year. I was going like, to say, because Zanvor replaces yeah, Vietnam's Germany. Vietnam is the uh, third Grand Prix of next year. Yeah. yeah, so this is where, like, I've got a problem with this. And, it, you know, it, it's been a thing for a while now, so... I feel like F1 is, is clinging onto this formula, this Baku Kota formula of racetrack. And it's a problem because it's specific or is what works for the current cars we have, not for what the cars are going to be in 2021. So in theory, the cars that we'll have in 2021 should be able to race at any track. So we could actually race at proper venues with nice flowing, you know, with elevation changes, proper racetracks. We don't necessarily have to like make these long straights with very heavy brake zones and silly hairpins and kind of long winding corners with dirty I, these tracks yeah. they have right now they're made that these tracks are made with these current cars in mind and that's a problem because in two years time i'm not so sure it's like it won't be as necessary um when it comes to miami the proposed out looks much better than the the previous one um it doesn't run for the stadium which is uh you know that would have been cool but i kind of get it because it's the miami dolphins and they're an actual nfl team like an active team so uh yeah overall i'm happy that we're going to miami and i'm glad f1 is moving in a direction of okay we can have more than one race per country slash state because yeah. obviously there's this whole one race per country rule that we have at the minute which kind of sucks in my opinion so it's good to see that at least we're gonna have two u.s races but at the same time 23 races it's a lot it's a lot too a lot. much yeah it just like already 20 sounds was like, perfect yeah i mean next year i'm already thinking that's too much and uh yeah i mean just did not for, for everyone involved like mechanics team obviously the drivers would love to just race whenever but um and even i don't know i just maybe fans. I, obvi yeah, yeah obviously fans. people can disagree if you but I, even i'm like oh, that's enough f1 for me i need i need some breaks between like i don't want a race every single weekend i really actually yeah. don't you we know, had it rather, didn't we? With the triple header, we was like, we had three yeah, back to yeah, back I remember weekends. we got exhausted. At the end we're of like, it, oh. Yeah, we was like, mm. obviously maybe well, it's a little bit different because we create content around it, or me, me and Tom create content. We do the podcast as a three around it, but it also just I feel like in terms of if you look at a calendar, I'd rather have you know just a smaller one, but it's all quality tracks and quality weekends, yeah. and also in terms of just the points meaning a lot more. Like a Grand Prix means that much more. Exactly. I think we start to saturate the races in a way. Yeah. We start to. That's what they say. Like what Brett Nicholson says, every race has less meaning. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. I, this is one of the rare things where, when it came out with the Eccleston and Vettel thing, I, I was like, I was, I didn't tweet about it at all because everyone was having to go at Eccleston. But I was kind of like, you know what? I low key agree with him. Like, yeah. there needs to be a quality control of like, you know, a Grand Prix meaning a lot. Um, and I think we're kind of losing that. Um, like F one is should be like eighteen cup finals. And it's, yeah, well, it's, we talked about it before, wasn't a bit it? Of like a knockout phase, like, or like a being, tournament. At the beginning of the year, there was that that phrase of like you know having twenty one Super Bowls. Yeah. 
yeah. You know, 21, yeah, sure, but let's let's stop not there. Let's not no, make it 23, in. 24, well, 25. Well, That's quite, the they said they wanted 25, didn't they, like two years ago? Right? Yeah, they and did. It's going in that direction. Yeah. You know, quite interestingly, in though, it obviously then this caused a bit of an uproar with like strain on teams, and then now it's come to the point where we're starting to wonder if the Grand Prix weekend may just need condensing as such, and especially after Japan where we lost a whole day's running because of the weather conditions on Saturday. The teams and drivers, and I think generally the F1 world, quite enjoyed having one less day. It just felt a little bit more relaxed, a little bit less... I mean, obviously it was a day in between, so it was quite relaxed in that sense, because it was like a day off almost. Yeah. But there is rumours. I mean, um, Gunter Stein has been in the news literally yesterday, as we're speaking on Tuesday. So Monday he came into the news and basically said that there is rumours that they might try and at least condense Friday running down. And as we've all... We all know when the drivers and teams know less, we get better racing. So yeah. it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, we will be condensing down the Friday, uh, just down to maybe one session, or as some as other people have said, maybe just have one Saturday morning practice session. Maybe make that an hour and a half, and then just go straight to qualifying. That. Would, that would be really quite like nice because then it would just condense it down to. Because you would watch Saturday practice. Like I'm unsure. The people that watch this podcast is probably a range of people that probably watch the whole Grand Prix weekend every single session to people just tuning in for qualifying or people just for the race. Yeah. There's going to be a range of that. And yeah. I will slip into the category of I watch the, the Grand Prix weekend probably from qualifying onwards. I'll watch the highlights and that's about it for practice. Yeah, the yeah. only time I watch practice is when I, if I ever go to the race live. Yeah, exactly. No, apart, apart from FP1 Australia, I will not watch a single practice session live. I'll just watch the highlights or read up about it. I would... But if it was just on Saturday, I might actually tune in. You know, if I, if I happen to wake up early and you know, there's uh, nothing to do maybe on that morning, I'd be like, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll watch the practice because obviously that's the first runnings and it's going to be the only running they're going to do before quali. So it could be genuinely, you know, very important what happens in that session. It'll be a you know, stacked a crash, session. Absolutely you know, stacked. Yeah, if there's a crash, you know, that's very important. If there's data to be run, you can see, oh, this team's doing really well. That means straight away, okay, later on in quali, they might be right up there. So, you know, mm. it'd be a lot more intriguing, I think, in that kind of way. And uh, it makes a lot of sense. For, for the sport, it would be the, the balancing of can you restructure F1 while still being able to like, fit in F2, F3 and Porsche Super Cup? Bearing in mind, if it means F2, F3 and Porsche Super Cup have to be pushed to a Friday, would that really hurt attendance figures on that day so obviously they, they've got to try and find a way so if they do shorten it for F1 they'd have to shorten it for everything if that makes sense mm, I think not necessarily you could just put more on the Friday regarding the lower categories which I do understand like even, even yeah, generally I, th- when I think t- tracks will sit there and go well you're robbing us of money um, I think you I think you'd go right, either put more stuff on Friday and then kind of be like for ticket sales if you want to buy a Friday ticket, it's just at a really reduced price because you know it's a feeder series day. Uh, or it comes, If they do it like that, yeah. If they do it like that. I think it could just about work. You, obviously, there'd be quite a bit of congestion, a little bit, but there's a lot of waiting around when you go to a Grand Prix weekend. Like, there's decent hours, like an hour sometimes between stuff. So they could just all just streamline it to be like, okay, straight away, this feeder series race ends. It's the other feeder series race now or the one feeder series practice ends. Okay, straight away now, the next one... Um, instead of this waiting around of like half an hour, 45 I between th- maybe. I um, think you need a little bit of time between sessions in case things happen. Which yeah, of course, yeah. Before. But then that's, I think that's a thing you can do by ear because they've, they've done that before with F1 weekends. They've played it by ear sometimes with the weather or, you know, or like Japan. I mean, how quickly they turn that around in terms of like yeah. the day before they're like, okay, yeah, we're going to cancel Saturday. So I think, you know, I think... That, it's yeah. possible. I, there's, yeah. there's enough smart people in... I mean, well, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> it, sometimes. There's enough smart people to work that out. And yeah. it would mean the overall cost of a Grand Prix probably decreasing, which is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Good. It's a good thing for us fans. And, you know, even when it comes to going to Grand Prix, like we discussed just before we started shooting this, when it comes to actually seeing the cars on track... It, the, the euphoria of seeing an F1 car on track significantly decreases quickly through Friday because, you know, you sat in the same position, you see what the cars are like. And there are tracks out there, such as Silverstone, where you can dot yourself about different parts of the track through different sessions, which I do think is brilliant. But why not just have that Friday at a reduced price? You know, we, we want to as much as the fans want to see as much action it's all about the fans you've got to give it to the guys and girls behind 
behind the scenes, you can't be stretching them that far. Yeah, I think ultimately a line. It's, just, it's, it's a decision for them to make. And unfortunately, I don't think the fans come into that much. I think it's more about the teams and whether they can put up with like a, a shorter schedule, whether they're happy of like, for example, running uh, two intense sessions on a, on a Saturday, so a, a morning practice and then a qualifying, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but I mean, as long yeah. as the teams are happy, then I don't see an issue because I don't think the fans... Really I think of fir- first and foremost, it's just FI, they want to do that. And then it's kind of a case of, yeah. right, teams, like, yeah, if you're okay with that, then cool, fine. I don't I don't think they have to be happy about it. I think they have to be okay with it because, <laughs> yeah. like, like we said, it's kind of a case of if they don't have enough data, it actually makes the race better. They might not like it, but it makes the race better. So exactly. it's kind of like tough luck. Uh, tough luck. You, yeah, you only have one session to do all your data running for the weekend and then you have to start quality. So just deal with it sort of thing. Um, and also just in regards to the calendar, like we're, we're straining into December. Is it this year we're straining into December? We're, we're December this race year. Race day. December Next year, yeah, they've rejigged it so we don't actually end in December next year. Right. Probably but even... Sorry, it's still just a bit we, too stacked. Yeah, like, bearing like in mind, earlier. football, we always use football as a good, a good example because we all support it on this, as us three. There's three months between the end of the season and the start of the season, unless there's the World Cup or the Euros. Yeah. But, you know, December, January, February, we, we are back into F1 again. Like we, We're back into testing. So we don't need, I mean, it, unless you start, if you, unless you think about the start of the season, that's March, it'll be still four months, but we can't be straight any further. We can't be encroaching. No, on, no. Because then you're going to think, bloody hell, well, people are going to think the gap between the two seasons are so small now, you may as well just start focusing on the next year's car a bit earlier because it's a lot yeah. sooner anyway. It's, yeah, yeah. you know, it's all personal opinion, but. It's something I think we'd like. Yeah, to I don't see. think any, I don't think anyone's entirely always going to be happy with count the how the calendar is and how that all works out. But I think I think we can all come to agreement in terms of it. It seems like a cool idea. We should maybe try and look into about reducing the weekend possibly because it worked really well. And like we said, there's a number of factors of why it would work in terms of creating better racing. And then yeah, if you factor in the calendar's getting longer, that might be a way you try and reduce congestion of people overworking for so long. If each Grand Prix weekends that little bit smaller maybe in terms of number of days worked. Um, just, I still think twenty three is just too much. Yeah, no, no, I'm still agreeing. It's it's it's, it's it's a lot. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. I already feel Especially like when you're going from like Miami to Vietnam. Like, let's, 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 let's just like, put it in perspective for a second there. Like, it's well, it probably wouldn't be back to back like that. But yeah, no, I get what you mean. But, like globally, well, I mean that's quite topical though. Like we're in a massive state now where like we do need the sport. Maybe does need to turn and look at itself and think. How how can we improve when it emissions. comes to the effect on the yeah with emissions and the environment? And I mean yeah, like people are pointing out the fact that we've got Canada slap bang in the middle of the European leg. Like why yeah. stick it with the end of the season? And we do maybe need a rejig of the calendar yeah. to. Just, yeah. I mean, my, my, my thing is, would Canada maybe not? I don't know what I've never been can, uh, Canada, but I'm not really sure. But maybe Canada around Brazil time, like end of the season. It's winter. That there are snow issues. I ain't got a clue. Like that part. Of Canada, I, th- I think. I think. Clue. I think it's weather and also. I think for the 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 park that they host it at and like that entire area in terms of like the what do you call it the city council and stuff like that. I think they've all agreed the their agreement of like maybe that's the best time to host it. I think the same way like obviously when Miami came out last time, that was a big backlash as well of like the some of the city people were kind of not happy with the yeah. plans that were being laid out. And it's the same thing with everything, really. I mean, uh, here at Britain, we kind of have it easy in that kind of way because obviously it's a private thing. It's a private run thing. The government and the, the country has no say in it. Silverstone privately run the British Grand Prix. So yeah. we, there's never anything like that. But with Canada, I'm sure probably there is something like that. I feel um, like they could maybe move one of the US races, like USA maybe. next Because back in the day, when we used to have Indianapolis, that was after Canada. Yeah. And then obviously... Yeah, it makes dropped. geographical so, a lot more sense, doesn't it? So... Yeah, it's a bit of a weird one, that. Have a North um, American leg, a South American leg. Exactly, yeah. Like, you could have Canada yeah. and Texas, and yeah. then later on in the season, you still have Mexico and Brazil, that kind of thing. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of an onboard then, uh, all on that, but uh, for now, it doesn't look like they're thinking about that, at least for next year, for sure, because the calendar's always been confirmed there. I think it's Vietnam is race three. I believe China, then, is the next one, or I think the other side. Either I think China's quite close so to... Australia, Australia Bahrain, Bahrain. Oh, wait, no, no, hang on. Sides. Is it... Oh wait, okay. Let, uh, um, let me quickly try and bring it up because um, uh, is is next year the one where they were talking about bring, uh, moving China like back to the end of the season? I don't think that. Do you remember China used end. to be at the end, right? Yeah, second to last race. Well, the thing, the thing is, the, the way that worked was 
China was the last race of the season for two seasons, 04 and 05, because it was agreed upon the contract. It would be the, the, the curtain closer, if you will. Right, okay. But since then, it's always been... Oh, was it last uh, race of the season? It was in 04 and 05. And then God, it imagine pushed, finishing and then, and then, the season in China. The right. fall from last. Okay, so last. okay, I was cor- I was correct. I guessed it. Cor- I remembered it correctly. It was it's Vietnam P is is third, and China's the next one. So th- that makes cool. a lot yeah. more geographical sense yeah. for that. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Then you then we go to Netherlands, um, for Zandor after China. Spain makes sense. Monaco, okay, Azerbaijan, yeah, Azerbaijan makes back sense. Back but then from it. Azerbaijan all the way to Canada, then to France. Austria, obviously, then it's, the, it's the, then it's the normal, the very established the European. European order, basically. So does that mean then that Monaco becomes race seven? Yeah, Monaco for the first That's time in a while weird. is That's race always seven. always race six. Always yeah. race six. Well, I, yeah, I always remember Monaco it, it, in Canada, six and, uh, it, six and seven. It used to be race seven a little while ago when they used to have like the Nürburgring and stuff, like those tracks, European Grand Prix and stuff like that before. Uh, 15 years ago. Yeah. It has, yeah. It has <laughs> Not, quite a while ago. <laughs> yeah, it, quite has, while. it has moved around. Yeah, 15 years. You were watching the sport then, but then when you think 15 years, that's how long no, I watched, time. I watched all the season reviews last week, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for him now, it's literally days ago that that happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wow, that was really recent. <laughs> <laughs> really recent time in my life. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's the 2021 talk, I think, really. Um, that's the tea. Uh, that's that's the tea really with it and uh we move forward then to this year 20, uh, 2019 still uh to do the mexican grand prix the race where lewis hamilton could be crowned the world champion once again for the third time at mexico he could be crowned the world champion of f1 um but he's not very confident about uh mercedes chances obviously ferrari Shock. should be pretty quick in a straight line at mexico verstappen is not very uh confident about red bull doing a repeat of what they did last year um, and I would agree, really, because they've looked like they've dropped off a little bit, actually, then this season. Um, and really, I would kind of bat Ferrari to be very strong around there. But obviously, you can't ever count out Mercedes. High altitude. They say a lot of things. The playing field, though, that's the thing. Yeah, well, yeah, that is a thing. But um, I don't know. For Red Bull do seem to have not been... Ad- like, going into Mexico last year, I think they were they were looking closer than they were yeah. this last race, which is kind of annoying, really, in a way, because it would be cool. I don't agree with how it's another to happen. I think... Ferrari have an issue with race pace at the moment. So, okay, maybe on one lap on Saturday, they might not be in contention. But when it comes to the race, that massive drag down to the first corner, I think it's anyone's game. You can get the sip stream yeah. down to turn Well, one, if it's a one-two for Ferrari, they're going to have that issue where they're just giving the other guys toes. So <laughs> that's... Uh... Yeah, maybe. But um, I don't know, race pace-wise, I think Ferrari, they admit themselves, they're kind of like, they're not quite there yet. Like they, they, they've got the one lap pace now and the race pace is okay, but they're just lacking a little bit in certain areas and you can tell like Mercedes do seem to have a bit more on Sunday or at least yeah. like, a fraction more they, they, they seem to be more consistent I think Sochi was Ferraris they threw that one away due to you know various reasons and then obviously Suzuki you can kind of tell that they were just like Bottas uh, kept Leclerc behind they were just, he was just lacking a little bit of pace so it would be nice to see a bit of an improvement in race pace especially with like next year's cars in mind if they can suss that out this season that would be massive for them like going to next year yeah, well, I mean, they, they had a little bit. It, there was a, that little brief moment where they, they they had everything basically, and then they kind of just like dropped off a little bit in yeah. the last two rounds. Um, and especially yeah, last race like Bottas was never really at all under pressure from Vettel, and obviously Leclerc, we didn't really know what his pace was going to be like um, with the, the little breakage that we had at the very start of the race. But in terms of predictions, um, then in terms of in terms of that, should we go into qualifying and? Uh, who are we backing for? I think we know who probably maybe put on pole in terms of what we, what we literally just said. But um, Vettel. We know, we know what car. Yeah. Okay. Well, Cal's going Vettel straight away. He's already, already he sent it there with Vettel. I'm, I'm going to go. Was, I would go with. Uh, I'm going to go with Vettel. I think he's in fine form actually, quality wise. I was, I was going to agree. I, I, I wanted to look at last year's quality for like for Leclerc. Leclerc doesn't spring to mind like last year having a good race in Mexico. Like not some races stand out to me when in, in the Sauber last year, but I can't remember Mexico being the stand out. It doesn't spring to mind. So I'm going to say Vettel as well. Yeah. I okay. We're all going for a Vettel pole last year. Obviously, so, we talked about in the podcast for Japan looking like really like, you know, he's making steps towards that old Vettel fame. So let's see if that's going to ring true in quality uh, at Mexico. But then uh, Sunday then, race pace wise, might be a little bit different. What are we thinking, lads, for the top five at least? I don't agree either with Red Bull or Mercedes. They will be at the front. And, yeah, the only I thing mean, that's going to stop Mercedes is maybe tyre issues like last, yeah, last few years. I mean, there's no team orders when it comes to the championship. I think Hamilton can r- wrap up the championship. Uh, I was reading it earlier. He needs to finish on the podium 
and for Bottas to finish... 10th. If Hamilton's third, Bottas has to be Yeah, uh, yeah sorry. Yeah, pretty much Hamilton's, bagged it, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, Hamilton's got to finish on the podium out. and Bottas not finishes. Or well, Hamilton wins and then Bottas doesn't finish on the podium as well. I think that's No, I think the way it works is I think it's probably going to go to the next race at USA. That's what's going to happen. It, yeah. I think it'll probably get settled there. I think Bottas needs to stink over a race, basically. Cause I think he needs to yeah. outscore him by 14 points. What, with I this think. one? Yes. Does he? Yeah. Wow. As far as I'm aware, I'll double check that. You do your predictions, I'll double check that because I was reading oh, I it earlier on Sky Sports. Bottas finishes up fourth from Hamilton's third. It goes on to another race. Um, but I'm going to say a top... I'm going to say a top six because Albon's look good lately, so I'm going to say a top six. I'm going to put Vettel to win. I think he's due a win. Leclerc second. I think Ferrari will hold on. I think just because of the tyres rather than the race pace. I think that, that that's the key factor here. Right. Verstappen I've got for third. Okay. I'm going to say Bottas gets fourth and Hamilton in fifth with Albon pushing him. I think Mercedes will struggle with tyres. I think Bottas it's all or nothing for him. You know, like We know he's not going to win the championship but in, in his head he's like he's all or nothing at this point. Whereas Hamilton's yeah. like he can afford to like take it easy because it will come. So I'm going to say Bottas gets fourth. I think he beats Hamilton. Okay. Um, I'll and he won go the last with, race, so four, you know. I'll go with... Uh, no, I'm going to go with Hamilton wins it. I'm going to go with Vettel Ooh. in second. I'll go with Verstappen in third. Hopefully, I'm hoping Red Bull will be better than Verstappen thinks they will be. Uh, Leclerc, I'll go with P4. Bottas, P5. And Albin, P6. This might be one of the hardest to predict because we really don't know where Mercedes or Red Bull are going to stack up against Ferrari because as Tom said, like it's hard to... It's hard we to know, know Mexico. The, we hard to know anyone. Ferrari. We know that that the race pace is poor, but then like they couldn't, they could suddenly pull something out of the bag again. It I could be a Mercedes victory. I do tires maybe think it is. Key. Yeah. So Mercedes I'll, I'll say. That's the thing. I'll say it's last year. Hamilton, Vettel, Leclerc, Bottas, Verstappen, Albon. I'll do quite status quo. And to confirm on the permutations, the permutations are now a nightmare. Now we've got the fastest lap. So oh, in short terms, Hamilton wins. He needs, well, Hamilton needs 14 points. He needs, basically, he needs to outscore him by 14 points. So yeah. if he takes victory and the fastest lap, Bottas needs to finish fourth or lower. Or without the fastest lap, fifth or lower. Um, second, it's yeah, it's, it, it probably isn't going to happen. I thought you meant um, Bottas has to outscore Hamilton by 14 points when you said that before, and I was like, no, 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 no. I don't no. think so. No, the, yeah, yeah. the gap's it, it, it huge. USA. At least with my, your prediction suggests Hamilton will win it this weekend, but my my prediction suggests it goes on to USA. Just because F1's really boring like that, it will the championship <laughs> will be decided again in Mexico three years on the trot. <laughs> that's yeah, usually stuff. how it works. Ooh. Yeah, sometimes, some, yeah, a lot of the times actually, not sometimes, a lot of the times that's how F1 works out. But for for Hamilton's sake, it would be very nice for him. I, I think personally, if he could win it at USA, obviously, he'll probably have a lot of uh, his celebrity friends out there in US. So. I um, think the technicality here is Hamilton's won it the third from last race of the season, the last two years, which was USA. This year, Mexican USA have spun round. They've swapped round places. So yes, really, they if, if the consistent pattern is to be followed, be next. it would be USA. Next, next yeah. one. Yeah, yeah well, but it would be Mexico in terms of events. Fun fact. What? Mm. What? I was saying in terms of, event, in terms of events, it'd be, yeah, it'd be Hamilton like Mexico. Yeah, do you not understand that, Arif? It'd be Mexico what, what again. What do you mean in terms of events? In terms well, of events, so they've swapped places, so which is still yeah, the same yeah, round of the rounds, season. But the third last race is not Mexico anymore, it's USA. Yeah, so it's that's the same event, saying. technically. Like, event round, that's what Oh, the, round, what okay, round. Yeah, basically. Okay. I, got very, I thought he meant that Mexico was the event. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> got very confused what on earth you were saying there. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, on that note, I think we should end it. Clearly, my brain's absolutely done for today. Fried. In terms of, fried. In terms of all this talk about calendar talk, is really frazzled my brain. Um, no, is there anything else to really talk about in Mexico? Um, in terms of midfield fights, we've. Uh, that's actually a little bit of news it's, that hasn't really been. Don't predict it because it's no, going to be not, impossible No, I'm not going to predict. predict it. I don't think we can predict it. But every, bit, every team could do quite well this there's a bit. There's a bit of uh, news that's kind of, um, not been talked about maybe a lot. And we mentioned it before. I think Tom, you mentioned it. Uh, come off Japan, the whole Renault thing um, with their the little um, what yeah. was it, brake diff 
uh, change automatic what, brake bias. Yeah, automatic brake bias changing stuff like that, and that's being ratified now in terms of racing point and making that proper challenge. Um, but despite that, um, and this, despite that whole thing, McLaren still are on uh, are still going kind of like a full steam ahead of like they still don't think they completely secured P4 quite yet. Uh, and they're still going to go full steam ahead. And then obviously, if yeah. Renault do lose points, then you've got teams like Toro Rosso and Racing Point coming and nipping at their heels. So this last four rounds are going to be. I think very, very tasty, I think. Especially for teams like Toro Austin, Racing Point and Renault. Because I think McLaren probably are safe, in my I opinion. I think if McLaren get another best of the rest this weekend, it's done. Yeah. For McLaren, yeah. yes. But yeah. it, this is the part of the season where it does get interesting when it comes to midfield. And I'll be focusing more on the midfield, to be honest. The moment the championship gets wrapped up, I'll be focusing on the midfield. See who wins the best of yeah, the rest and everything. And Bottas can win the championship, Callum. What do you want to say? Yeah, <laughs> it's not like Hamilton needs to Yeah, it's very, very likely. Very, very likely. It's very likely that. But, <laughs> and um, Bottas win. Yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> on that note then, I think we'll end that. Uh, end this podcast off that on that. So guys, if you did enjoy it, then be sure to hit that like button. Let us know what you thought in the comments below about it, especially the calendar stuff. If you uh, kind of agree or disagree with any of those points about shortening it, lengthening it, you know, the quality uh, kind of argument about that and also the race weekend one, because obviously that affects uh, you guys maybe going to GPs, you know, in terms of do you get less or more for your ticket price and whatnot. And then obviously the predictions, what are yours for the Mexican Grand Prix? Do you think Hamilton will wrap up the championship this race weekend or will it go to usa in austin texas let us know in the comments below if you're on your around here you can get subscribed to this channel for more and you can check out these two uh twitter handles will be on the screen the entire time of course we're on audio spotify soundcloud and itunes and I, I think i said it last time or two episodes ago but massive thanks the the uh, support on those platforms is still really really good and pretty consistent to say that we've obviously had quite a few off weeks where we haven't been uploading as consistently uh and still there's so many decent number of you guys still listening over on there so appreciate that all the time if you do want to support us directly you can check us out on Patreon in the link below, or you can check out GT Omega if you want like a racing chair or a desk chair and use the code pitlanef one at checkout and that will directly kick back to us. But till the next one, guys, the review hopefully for the Mexican Grand Prix later on next week. Till then, guys, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.